All right, we're going to get started here. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Zach Jones from Vertical Measures, and I'm here hosting VM's monthly webinar series. Today's webinar is titled Eight Easy Landing Page Tactics to Increase Conversion Rate, and will be presented by our very own Keegan Brown. Uh, Keegan manages several PPC and conversion rate optimization strategies for a variety of our clients. In his day-to-day, -day, he is managing results-driven campaigns, optimizing landing pages, and building long-term relationships with clients through great customer service and continuous improvement. Before we get started and I hand it over to him, I just have a few housekeeping notes to get to. Uh, today's webinar will be available for viewing by tomorrow, and we'll send out an email with a link so you can watch it and review the slides. We're also, uh, we'll also be happy to answer any questions, so if you take a peek at their web webinar interface, you'll see a question applet uh, where you can send anything you'd like to ask me or Keegan afterwards. Also, you can ask questions via Twitter using the hashtag VMWebinar, hashtag VMWebinar. If you're having any technical difficulties, uh, just sign off and attempt to reconnect. It should work. So uh, with my notes complete, I'm going to hand it off to Keegan. Thank you, Zach, and welcome everybody, and thank you again for joining us uh, for our webinar here at Vertical Measures. As Zach said, I'll be going over some easy landing page tactics to increase conversion rate, and uh, as well as some case studies that we've seen uh, here for our clients. So just to give you an overview of what we're going to be covering today, I'm going to be talking about the importance of increasing conversion rate, A-B testing, and what you need to know. I'm going to be going through the, just the basics today for A-B testing uh, with our limited amount of time today. Then we're going to be going over some landing page tips that you can start using today. Like I said, I'm going to cover some case studies of uh, real-world examples that we've seen here at Vertical Measures. And then just some additional tips that I found when I was going through the webinar and making sure that I can give you as much information as I can. Before we go any further, I want to make sure uh, that uh, everything that I say in this webinar uh, you take with a grain of salt. Um, I'm going to be giving a lot of best practices and things that we usually start out with when designing a landing page. but I want to make sure that you never feel constrained to best practices and don't copy exact test ideas that we show or that you really see anywhere else, uh, mainly because every website is different and every, every business's audience is different and how they behave on a website is going to uh, be much different across um, all industries and verticals. So um, use these as ideas and more of uh, something to test for your specific uh, situation. Lastly, test everything. So even, like I said, don't feel constrained to best practices. If there's a best practice out there, it might be working, but maybe test going against that best practice. And we're going to be going into some ideas of how to do that and kind of showing you the, the idea of, of why we do that. So we are going to proceed. So again, I'm going to be talking, uh, starting out with the importance of increasing conversion rate. So really, the, the, the reason why you want to increase conversion rate is to make more money or, or whatever you're trying to do with your website, whatever that goal is. Increasing conversion rate can save money on ad spend from your PPC campaigns. It'll increase leads or sales. Uh, easier than, creating, in, than increasing traffic, this is... Uh, this could be your specific situation. We're going to assume that you have obviously some traffic running some PPC campaigns or you have a good organic, uh, good organic results. So um, we're going to assume that you have some traffic and uh, you know, maybe you're in that point where you don't have the budget to spend more on your PPC campaigns or an SEO agency. So uh, maybe increasing conversion rate is the next best alternative to getting more traffic. Lastly, conversion rate really is just increasing the efficiency of your traffic. And if you think about it, you have a limited amount of traffic each month, and you want to make sure you're getting the most out of those visitors. So here's just a, a real simple 
a table showing some metrics from a PPC campaign. So you have 15,000 clicks, and with a cost per click of $1.50, your cost is $22,500 $22, per month. At a conversion rate of 4%, you're generating about 600 conversions per month. So let's say your goal is 720 conversions. And <clears throat> the only way you know how to get there is through getting more clicks, uh, which assuming the same conversion rate, you'll get uh, those conversions. So in this example, we increased cost here to 27,000. We upped our, our PPC spend, which generated 3,000 more clicks. Assuming the same cost per click and conversion rate, you reach your goal at 720 conversions. And that's great. So uh, you know, you're running the effective PPC campaigns. Uh, you you ran the data, you saw that increasing your budget is going to help get you more leads. Um, and it worked, which is great. What you'll notice though is that that's an increase of $4,500 in cost. And to continue hitting that 720 conversions per month, you need to keep paying that $4,500 increase in cost every single month. So let's say we increase conversion rate uh, by 20% instead of increasing traffic. With the same goal of 720 conversions, you need to increase your conversion rate by 20%. So on the table here, you'll see that clicks and your cost per click and your cost all stay the same. The only change here is your conversion rate increased from 4 to 4.8% or a 20% increase and your conversions increased. So that's a zero dollar increase in cost, and this is a one-time change with a continued increase. Now, <clears throat> if you know anything about landing pages or conversion rate optimization, you've probably seen that with seasonality, conversion rate changes, and over a long period of time, uh, your conversion rate is going to change based on uh, your audience and, and everything like that. So. Uh, we're going to simplify for the sake of this example and say that this can be a continued increase of that 20% increase in conversion rate. So just to show on a graph, uh, when you increase your spend, you'll see that uh, the orange bar is cost, and you see that go up in, let's say, next month in April. And you see the green bar, which is your conversions, go up and hit your goal at the 720 conversions per month. With just the 20% increase in conversion rate, you see that that uh, the amount of conversions increased to 720 per month for the rest of the year while your cost staying flat. So let's say you've been running PPC campaigns this year, you're seeing some good results, and uh, you want to jump that 20% in April. Uh, these are two options that you have, whether increasing spend or increasing your conversion rate. Throughout the year, you're going to get the same conversion volume if you go either one of these routes. Except if you go with the right, with increasing conversion, volume, uh, conversion rate, you're going to save over $40,000 uh, by making some changes that we're going to be covering in just a minute uh, to your conversion rate. Instead of increasing spend and getting more traffic. So next we're going to talk about A-B testing and the importance of it and how it works to get that increase in conversion rate that we just covered. So A-B testing is essentially taking your existing traffic and showing 50% of your traffic one version of a page and showing the other 50% of your traffic a slight variation of it. <clears throat> and over a period of time, you can gather data and see which one performs better and maybe makes more sales, more leads, or whatever your conversion goal is. So some things of what to test. You can test the copy, the design, the forms, some of the other content like images and videos, and a ton of other things that you can be uh, testing that we'll be covering today. Then, uh, so you might be wondering, well, how long does a test take uh, so I can make sure that I'm doing it right? 
And there's a lot that goes into it, but because of a limited amount of time, I'm just going to give you a brief overview. It depends on your volume of traffic, the volume of your conversions, and the significance between variants. So if you make just one small change to maybe your logo on the two variations, uh, it might take a bit longer for you to see any significant results uh, because it's a really small change. However, if you uh, have a complete redesign of your page as your B variant, uh, you're likely to see a much more significant change a lot quicker, uh, whether that's good or bad, but you'll definitely see those results uh, much faster. So <clears throat> when you start A-B testing, it's really important that you test, again, design, copy, forms, images, videos, <clears throat> but then you need to learn. You need to analyze the data and see what worked. Did the image do better than the video? Did it outperform the variant with the video? If so, keep the image and test another, uh, another element of that page and then repeat. And you want to test as often as possible and continue to test. So uh, we like to uh, test as, as often as possible, like I said, and if your traffic allows it, um, monthly or even bi-weekly to try and get as many tests as possible to see those incremental lifts in conversion rate. And something that we say here at Vertical Measures, uh, A-B testing equals always B testing. So just using the uh, previous examples, the green bar shows that uh, a client who, or a website that is, starts A-B testing in April, and then continues testing uh, throughout the entire year. And the orange bar is somebody who uh, did one test in April, saw that 20% increase, and then just kept it there and stopped testing. So you can see January through March, uh, neither one of those websites is testing. Then uh, both sites see a 20% increase in April. And then the green client, or the, the green website, ends up uh, with maybe smaller tests or um, is not as, as big of an increase as the 20%, but they get incremental 5% monthly increases. You can see that green bar being significantly higher than, the, uh, than in January through March, as it is in December. So over the year, that's a 77% increase in conversion rate compared to the green website versus the orange. And that is an 18% increase in conversion volume. So you can see here the importance of continuous testing, even if it's real small lifts in your conversion rate each month. The next important thing to be thinking about when you're designing a landing page is consistency. You don't want to confuse your visitors. Messaging on your should be consistent through your ad, your landing page, like the headline, the offer, and the copy, the form and the call to action, the thank you page, and then really throughout the rest of the sales process. So if you tell me that uh, you're, you have solar panels in Phoenix in your ad, and I land on your landing page, and I get to a landing page that's talking about uh, solar panels in New York, I'm going to be a little confused and maybe leave the site or be going through uh, the rest of your site to try and find where the Arizona landing page is. So that the consistency increases trust within your visitors. Your page um, has what you said it has. Your, your ad or the referral page that I, uh, a visitor came from um, is going to be looking for what that ad said, so you want to make sure that it has it. It also creates a better experience. Like I said, if you don't have what I'm looking for, I either am going to leave or I'm going to go looking for it on your site. And that can be frustrating and end up me just leaving your site and maybe going to one of your competitors. So it's important to really increase the experience the visitor has on the website by being consistent. So just an example here of a of a funnel going from the ad all the way to the thank you page that we did here for um, a gold dealer 
uh, just showing the consistency from throughout the whole process. So as you can see, it's talking about uh, gold <coughs> within the ad, and the call to action is get the free gold buying kit. So when the user lands on the landing page, it should be seeing something about this gold kit, and it should be free like the ad says. Otherwise, uh, the visitor is going to be confused or upset that it's not free. So here's a, a screenshot of that landing page um, showing the, the free kit, saying uh, get your free kit now, and uh, giving you that call to action on the green button. Then when you click the green button, you get a form, and that form stays consistent with saying get your free informative gold kit, download instantly. And even the call to action on the blue button there says get my free gold kit. So the user was, saw the ad, saw the call to action, get the free gold buying kit. Now they're on the landing page. They see it. They say, yes, I want it. They get the form and they say, okay, now I just need to fill out this form and I get my kit. And on the thank you page, it has uh, messaging saying, uh, talking about the gold kit and letting you know that the download is ready, setting that expectation. And then obviously saying thank you for your interest and showing what that gold kit looks like and they can uh, download it right from there. So again, staying consistent all the way through the process from the ad all the way to the thank you page. The third aspect that I'm gonna be talking about with landing pages is headlines. A good headline lets the visitor know what the page is about pretty much instantly. If I land on your page, I should be able to look at your headline and say, <clears throat> I know what this page is about. I know what their services or their product or what the offer is or why I need to buy it. Again, you want to make sure it's consistent with the ad the visitor clicked on. If, again, if I clicked on an ad that said 10% uh, off on all clothes and I get to your site and um, your landing page doesn't say anything about a 10% off deal, I'm either going to think you lied to me or, uh, or maybe you sent me to the wrong page and now I got to go look for that 10% deal. A good headline also captures the visitor's attention. We have a very limited amount of time to get the attention of somebody, uh, whether that's in person or online, and so that headline needs to capture their attention, and then it needs to tell that visitor what action to take. And with this you can use a subheader um, and using that to match your call to action to tell them to maybe fill out a form for a free quote or a free trial or to buy now. Making changes to your headline and, and doing tests is very quick and effective. Uh, a lot of people overlook this and maybe just put uh, uh, services as the headline or um, solar panels in Phoenix. But what you want to really do is take the time, take 15 minutes to create a new headline that is going to capture their attention, is consistent with the ad, and is really going to entice them to, um, to keep reading throughout the page and uh, end up taking the, the action that you're asking them to take. If you really want to spend time uh, thinking of a new headline because the rest of it is pretty easy. Um, it's very easy to implement the change as you don't really need to design anything new and you don't need to really code anything. So um, it's really just making a few simple changes to the headline and it can show, show significant lifts in conversion rate. And I'll show you those in just a minute. First, we're going to talk about uh, some formulas to make a better headline. And you can use this for when you're writing blog articles, when you're uh, writing ad copy, as well as, of course, your landing page. So first is a very simple one that you're probably all familiar with, is the how-to headline. <clears throat> so for example, how to increase your PPC conversion rate. How to get more for your money with your credit card. How to learn Spanish in your free time. These are telling the user, we're going to tell you how to do something that you may not already know how to do or how to do something better. Taking it a step further, 
you can do a how to blank without type of headline. So for example, how to increase PPC leads without increasing spend. How to start a business without a ton of money. Or how to create a website without knowing how to code. So really the point of this is that the headline includes the rebuttal of the visitor. So if if a visitor is really interested in starting a business, but you know their their uh, biggest hesitation is they don't have the capital to, you're telling them start a business which they're already interested in without a ton of money. Now you just solve their problem, and they might keep reading and end up taking that action. Same with creating a website without knowing how to code. Uh, knowing how to code is a difficult skill, and many people don't know how to do it. So, but a lot of people still want their own website or their own business to have a website. So. <clears throat> This is uh, automatically giving a rebuttal to somebody saying, yeah, I want a website, but I don't know how to code. So keeps them engaged, keeps them uh, looking for how to do that uh, and take that action that you want them to take. The next is a very simple one, and again, probably something that you're very familiar with, uh, what's called the number headline. Things like 10 ways to be more productive at work, increase productivity by 32% with this tool, save 30 per hours per month by automating your marketing. It's showing how you can solve an, a problem within the headline, but being very specific about how much and quantifying uh, what you're getting out of it. So <clears throat> maybe if uh, something saved you 10 hours a month for uh, by automating your marketing, that might be um, that might not be worth it, but 30 hours, that might be put me over the edge to say, okay, that's worth it. I'm going to now read more and see if this is really going to save me that 30 hours and how it's going to do that, and maybe I'll get a free demo of your marketing automation platform. And just two other quick ones, uh, something like get rid of blank once and for all. So, for example, get rid of lower back pain once and for all, kind of showing that <clears throat> That uh, that pain point, that uh, that negativity, that whatever you're experiencing, and basically tells you and reassures you that whatever we have, we're going to fix it and make you feel better about moving forward with that brand. So, for example, for example, get rid of contacts once and for all. Uh, maybe you put like get LASIK today right after that. So you're trying to get people to uh, pay for LASIK. That might be a way to say get rid of contacts, get rid of the headache of having contacts or glasses, and get late LASIK. Sense of urgency is the last one. Uh, this really helps uh, you know people take actions now, and you can use language like do not miss out on this event, this once in a lifetime event, uh, save 10% on shoes today only, uh, only 12 reservations left for outdoor adventures. Uh, the scarcity there of whether that's reservations or products or the promotion uh, encourages and entices people to uh, take that action now because they really don't want to miss out on anything. and It's really like playing on that fear of missing out. So here's a case study of a headline that we used to try and appeal to emotions. This was for a website that was for a boarding school. <coughs> and uh, it was for uh, for an all boys boarding school. And so uh, you can see the headline is almost exactly the same, and we just changed a few words in that top line uh, from "your son can realize his full potential" to "help your son realize his full potential." And we did this because we found that uh, a majority of the visitors of this boarding school's website were parents. Uh, <clears throat> And so we wanted to play on their emotions to uh, make them feel more comfortable about sending their uh, son to this school. So um, it's not just your son can realize, uh, your son help your son. Um, making it seem like them taking this action is, is them helping their son realize their full potential. <clears throat> and so we ran this for about a month and we ended up seeing a significant lift in conversion rate from the B variant, so the help your son, again, playing, uh, appealing to the emotions of those parents. And so, as you can see, 
again, this was a very, very slight change. We changed two things. Took, um, we took a, a lot of time preparing and thinking about and, and hypothesizing this headline, but the actual change on, this, on the landing page was very uh, small and very quick. And um, just after a month of doing that, we saw a 25% increase in conversion rate. So you can see how just one small change can really have a dramatic effect on that conversion rate and kind of goes back to those, some of those examples from earlier in the webinar talking about just increasing your, your conversion rate by 20% can save you a lot of money with your, with your PPC campaigns. So <clears throat> Conductor did a, a uh, study on uh, overall headline preferences. And what they found was uh, headlines with numbers in them were much more likely to convert <clears throat> visitors rather than uh, the how-tos or the questions um, or uh, addressing the reader directly. <clears throat> and like I said before, uh, test everything. This, this is a sort of a best practice or uh, overall, so you may want to start out with something like a number in your headline, but you may want to test it with a question and see how your audience reacts. And, and so um, but this can just kind of show you the, the effects that, that making little changes to your headlines uh, really has. So here's another case study. Uh, for a solar uh, business and so variant A says go solar today and save hundreds on your electric bills, zero down and free installation. B you can see just says stop paying high electric bills and still has that zero down and free installation. Thinking through this we thought a lot about the, uh, the visitors of this page are probably price conscious. They're, they're looking for a free installation, zero down, um, uh, the, the stop paying high electric bills was, was doing a really good job of converting visitors. So we thought, how do we, how do we make it even better for those price conscious visitors? So we quantified how much they could save on, the, on their electric bills. So um, obviously high electric bills is relative to um, you know, everybody and um, solar might not be worth it if if uh, you know fifty dollars is a high electric bill for somebody, and they say, "Well, I'm not going to save that much money," but if I could save hundreds on my electric bills, uh, maybe that will put them over the edge to make them convert. So again, after about a little over a month of running this test, we found that variant A, the one with the number and being more specific and quantifying how much you can save, uh, really increased conversion rate. So again took the time to think of a new headline and really put a lot of effort into that, but the actual change within the copy of that landing page uh, took less than 10 minutes after we realized what we we're going to write and, and put that into, into the landing page. And so again, we ran that test for a little over a month and we saw almost a 42% increase in conversion rate. That can completely change your entire campaign uh, for your PPC ads. Uh, you can be almost doubling your, your amount of leads without increasing cost at all. Uh, just by making some simple changes by thinking through uh, how your visitors uh, are behaving and what's going to appeal to them a little bit more. Next I'm going to be talking about benefits versus features. So, Imagine you're going to go car shopping and you're looking at this Mercedes and you think it's a great car and the salesman tells you all the features. Power lift gate and four doors, a 241 HP turbo four engine, advanced direct injection, all wheel, all season grip. Now, not everyone's a car person, including me, so I would have no idea what that really means. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to me, so that doesn't help me purchase that car at all. <clears throat> you want to make it easy for your visitors to know what they're getting out of your product or service. 
uh, a lot of times websites and businesses want to show their cool technology and all their new features, uh, their new formulas, but, but really people don't buy products. They don't buy that. They buy a better version of themselves. They want to benefit themselves using your product or service. So with knowing that, we're going to transform these features into benefits. So uh, actually after doing a little bit of research of what this all means, a power lift gate in four doors makes it easy to get into the car. So if that's a, that's a selling point to you, if you want to make sure it's easy to get into your car, that's what Mercedes should be saying. It's easy to get into. This 241 HP Turbo 4 engine, it sounds cool, but uh, off the top of my head, I would say I don't really know if that's good or bad. The benefit of it, though, it makes it fast and it helps the environment. To me, that's a selling point. I like to drive fast, and uh, I'm cool with helping the environment. Advanced direct injection. I have no idea what that means. Save on fuel. I would love to save money on, on filling up my car every month. So that's a benefit. That makes it easy for a person like me to know why I need to buy this car from this dealership. All wheel, all season grip. I have an idea of what that means, but really what that means is it's easy to drive in rough conditions. So if I know that I like to go drive in snow or the rain, uh, I want to feel comfortable uh, driving in these rough conditions and that this is the car to do it. Next I'm going to be talking about forms and calls to action. So to start, remove any unnecessary fields within your form. So if you have a form that's asking for their full address and uh, their name and their phone number and their email and everything like that, but you don't need their address, get rid of those fields. You don't need them. Uh, that limits, uh, you want to limit the hesitation from the visitor. Uh, people don't really like to give away their uh, all their information to brands, uh, especially the first time that they uh, that they get to a website or they hear about your brand, and especially if it's something like a guide download or just a um, or just a, a a form for like a free quote or consultation. You don't need my address. Why are you asking for it? Uh, you need to make it easy for your visitor to do that make them feel comfortable filling out that form. Use white space. Don't overcrowd your form with 50 different uh, form fields above the, the, the fold. Make it simple. Uh, make some good spacing. Use some white space uh, and make it clear and easy for your visitor to, to navigate through that form. <clears throat> and this one's obvious. Make it visible. Uh, I don't know how many times I've gotten to a website where I can't find the form. The ad told me to get a free quote, but I can't find it. It says, request a free demo. How do I do that? Um, make your form visible. Make sure it's on that landing page. With forms, you can try testing separating long forms into a two-step form. So uh, if you do have to ask for their address, maybe just get their name and email uh, and phone number up front. And then when they go uh, to step two, you, have, you say, hey, just a little bit more information. They're already there. They already put in their, their other information. Uh, they're a little bit, they might be a little bit more compelled to put in the rest of their address and everything like that and just finish the form. <clears throat> you can try different submit button colors. This is one that uh, is pretty well known and a lot of people have done it. And, um, but it's, it's important to test. Just because green buttons worked for a case study that you saw doesn't mean you need to put green buttons across your whole site. Uh, you need to test what works for your audience and test different colors and things like that. Uh, you can test a new CTA. So um, you can maybe do from a free consultation to complimentary consultation or uh, get a free quote or something like that that you can uh, interchange to see what type of call to action matches best with your audience. And then lastly, placement of form. You can put it above the fold, you can put it in the center of the page, you can put it at the bottom of the page. Uh, as long as it's on the page, you should be fine, but um, putting it in different places can really make a, diff a big impact. So it's important just to test that out every once in a while. 
good calls to action. So <clears throat> as we talked about, you want to make sure that that call to action is consistent with the ad. If your ad says get a free trial, um, when I land on that landing page, I should see something that says get a free trial and showing me how to do that. Uh, set clear expectations. If you have a two-step form, let them know. Let them know that they have to fill out two sections. If you make me fill out a form and I go to a second form and I didn't, I wasn't expecting that, I might think that you're going to keep asking me all these different questions and all these different forms and I'm just giving you all the information that I have. You want to set those expectations. As well as if it says download now, it should be to download now or take you to the page to download it. Um, if I say download now and I fill out the form uh, and I get to the thank you page and it says we'll send you an email in an hour with the free guide, I might be a little upset. And lastly, do not use uh, calls to action on your buttons like submit or send unless it really makes sense. HubSpot, uh, if you look at the graph on the right, uh, did a study with over 93,000 calls to actions over a 12-month period. And uh, what they call basic CTAs are uh, the submit and the send and send message, things like that, compared to get your free quote or get your free consultation or start your free trial, things like that. Those smart CTAs converted 42% uh, more visitors and leads than those basic send and submit CTAs. Some things to test with your calls to action, uh, things like color, size and shape, copy, and again, the placement of those CTAs. Next, we're going to talk about trust signals and making sure that your visitor feels comfortable and trusts your website and your brand to end up taking the action that you're asking them to. So some types of trust signals could be product reviews, testimonials, uh, awards, social profiles, before and after photos. And uh, again, so product reviews and testimonials are pretty straightforward. Uh, people want to know if your product or service is, is worth it. Did, were they happy with it? Were they happy with working with you? Did it work like they said it was? Is it overpriced? They want to get an idea of making sure that uh, before they take that action that other people have and it worked out well for them. It makes them feel more uh, comfortable and will trust you a little bit more. Using multiple payment options is always good for e-commerce, showing that you can uh, work with different vendors to uh, make sure that almost anybody who lands on your site has a, a, the ability to pay. Well-designed site kind of shows that you put effort into your website and so you're more likely to put effort within your website leads or sales. And then things like before and after photos are perfect for things like plastic surgery, uh, weight loss pills and diets and services, things like that. Uh, home remodeling, showing uh, something, uh, uh, an image of, of what the current state of the visitor might be in, whether that's overweight or has a um, you know, a, a bathroom that doesn't really look that great, and the after photo showing this is what we can do, and showing the 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 outcome, the the um, the desired outcome of of paying for your service. So um, somebody losing 50 pounds or remodeling to have a beautiful bathroom can really show and make that visitor trust that you know what you're doing. So just an example down here, we have. Uh, some previous clients giving some testimonials on one of our landing pages uh, just talking about their uh, experience with working with vertical measures and our knowledge and expertise. So here's a case study that uh, we have from uh, vertical measures and this is for a foot doctor. <clears throat> and uh, so on the left hand side we just have sort of images of probably the current state of whatever that visitor has when they get to this landing page. Um, so these different foot conditions that they're looking for a solution to. Versus variant B uh, showing the before and after pictures. So uh, somebody having um, 
one of these uh, types of foot conditions and then showing after surgery the desired outcome, the, the relief of the pain and uh, the, the better looking feet, making sure that uh, showing that this foot doctor knows what they're doing because the outcomes look right and correct. Um, so obviously neither one of these really looks that pretty, but um, the effectiveness of before and after photos really showed in this case study, with variant B being the winner after about a month and a half of sending traffic to these two pages. So variant B, like I said, this is the only change on this landing page, was just adding the before and after versus just the before. And this increased conversion rate by 29% in just a month and a half. This is a real quick uh, one, and it's about preventing leaks on your website. So here's a simple example of a landing page. <clears throat> and you can see they have most of the uh, elements that we've talked about so far, like a good headline and a good uh, call to action. Uh, they have the form visible. They have some good copy and all that. <clears throat> what you'll notice on this landing page is there's no links up top. There's nowhere else for the visitor to go, so it kind of forces them to fill out the form to really see anything else on their website. It eliminates distractions and eliminates them from leaking to other pages of your site that that don't uh, maybe have this form or don't you know that don't convert as well as this page does. And then again, just down at the bottom where most people have like footer links, uh, you'll notice that uh, there's no links there because it's it's allowing or it's enforcing this visitor to stay on this page. <clears throat> now, you might be thinking, well, what about the people who leave this page? Uh, maybe this isn't what they're looking for. Or maybe they're not ready to start a free trial yet. Um, how do we keep them on the site? And this is something that um, you can do on landing pages as well as your website. And it's through what's called exit intent pop-ups. And what that means is if I'm on this page and I, I'm not ready to uh, start a free trial and maybe I go up to the back button, which would be you know, maybe up to the left, or the X button, which might be up to the right, and you start scrolling that way and you start showing the intent to leave the page, you can show uh, what's called the exit intent pop-up or opt-in. And this is a little bit different of an example, but uh, so this was a landing page for a LASIK consultation. And so for somebody who says, oh, I'm not really ready for a LASIK consultation, I'm going to go ahead and leave the site. You get a pop-up that says, oh, we're not ready for a consultation? Uh, find out if you'd be a good candidate for LASIK and take our self-evaluation test now. So it's a little bit less of uh, a commitment by the visitor because they don't have to go in and they don't have to maybe be... Uh, talking to doctors or, uh, you know, kind of pressured into going into LASIK, but maybe they just want to see if they're a good candidate. Now we can lead them to a different page on the site that maybe fits their, uh, their, uh, their level of intent a little bit better than just the consultation. And so doing this for a LASIK client, we kept 7% of visitors on the site. So they weren't really interested in this page. So we said, okay, go to this page, and we kept 7% of those people on the site. Whereas otherwise, they would have been leaving and maybe not thinking about LASIK anymore, or go, likely going to a competitor's site that has a different option for them. Lastly, we're going to talk about a sense of urgency. So visitors are limited. You want to convert them, and as many of them as possible. You can use sense of urgency by enticing visitors to make the decision to convert now. You can show new laws or regulations or maybe seasonality or things like the political landscape that change uh, their mind uh, that's going to change the product or service. So if uh, solar... Uh, tax credits go up at the end of the year, you might uh, want to entice them by letting them know, hey, you want to get solar now before you can't get these tax credits anymore. 
uh, and then you can also show by showing scarcity of products or limited availability. Like uh, there's only uh, 50 seats left in this event. You need to sign up today before they're, they're running out. So you could use language like don't miss out, today only, limited seats available, and a ton of other ideas. So here's an example of a solar client uh, where the energy uh, company <coughs> uh, said that they're going to start raising the rates for solar. So uh, their energy rates for solar are good now, and in a few months they not they're not they're going to be high or they're going to be higher and and not as good as they are now. So we're trying to entice these visitors to uh, to get solar now so they can get these great rates. So you can notice on this landing page, there's several instances where we try to create that sense of urgency, like don't miss out, uh, lock in your rate today, time is running out, uh, and then again, lock in your rates today, and also using that big orange bar at the bottom there really brings attention to it and uh, is kind of an alert to that visitor saying, hey, you need to do this now before it gets more expensive. So that's all I have for the, uh, the eight tactics that we were going to cover. But as I was going through the webinar, I wanted to make sure that I can give you a little bit more information and just have some quick additional tips that you can use uh, on your landing page as well. So thank you, Pages. Thank you pages is one of the most overlooked pages within your site, but when you think about it, uh, thank you pages have the most qualified visitors on your site. They uh, just signed up for whatever you were asking them to or just bought a product. It means they are more interested in your product or service than the person who just landed on your homepage. So this is a great place um, to obviously set the expectation of hey, we'll call you in 24 hours with a quote, or we'll set up an appointment in the next day or two, uh, or <clears throat> if it's an e-commerce site, giving them an order number or uh, setting the expectation of when their delivery of their product is going to get there. But what you can do is keep them engaged with your brand. So you can create a next step in the conversion path, like um, if, if, for example, they just uh, signed up for a free guide download, Maybe it's time to give them a free demo uh, to your software. They're already interested. They're already on your site. Um, it's not hurting to ask them for signing up for a free demo. If you're a school or something like that and somebody just requests more information, then you can tell, say, hey, thanks for requesting more information. Here's your, got, your download or we'll send you a, more information in the mail. Do you want to schedule a tour now to come view our beautiful campus? Or like in the example here on the right with Jigsaw Health, um, this was a, a order, and so it shows their order number and lets them know that their package is being shipped, uh, and kind of sets those expectations, but it also gives an upsell and discount opportunity to include if they want to add something to their order um, and have it shipped with their other products that they just ordered. And that kind of creates that sense of urgency with putting a clock and, and letting them know they only have 10 minutes left to do that. And lastly, is using directional cues within your design to lead your visitors' eyes to convert. So as you can see, we have a, a several lines there uh, kind of showing the uh, benefits of LASIK and uh, kind of going down that and it, it funnels into the get my free consultation call to action. So it's leading the visitors' eyes down to that button and allowing them to convert much quicker. I want to thank everyone again for joining me today and hopefully uh, I was able to teach you guys something about landing pages and increasing conversion rate and really the importance of it. And I am free to answer any questions that you may have. All right. Well, thanks, Keegan. That was great. Uh, a lot of great information, and I, I think a lot of people are going to be able to take away some stuff to help their websites. Um, before we do jump into the questions, I just want to remind everyone that we will be sending out a recording of this and the slides uh, via email, and they'll also be available on our website uh, tomorrow. 
so with a few minutes left, uh, let's get to these questions. Uh, the first one, uh, what do you think is an adequate traffic sample size for a good conversion rate test? This is a great question, and it's something that uh, we have a hard time with, with clients who don't get a lot of traffic to their site, but you want to make sure that you, um, that you have enough, and, and I know that's a terrible answer, but um, I would say at least 2,000 visitors per variant, and you want to try and get those conversions to um, as high as possible um, to really uh, to really show that significance. But there are um, a lot of calculators out there. If you uh, look up statistical significance calculator, um, A/B testing tools like Unbounce, Optimizely, VWO, uh, they all have some calculators that can show you the, a good sample size. To, um, to look at before you start that test so you, you're aware of how long that test is going to be needed to, uh, to run for before you can conclude those results. Okay, uh, kind of piggybacking off of that, I heard you mention some tools that you would use. Are there any other tools that you would recommend for A-B testing that would increase uh, you know, your conver conversion rates? Yeah, it, so it's really up to uh, you know, the capabilities of your team that you have. So if you have a good IT team that is able to quickly make uh, changes to your website, you can use tools like uh, VWO or, or Optimizely, um, and, and that allows you to make changes to your whole site or just your PPC landing pages. Um, but it does require uh, sometimes a little bit of coding experience and knowledge. So um, if that's um, if that's what you have uh, as far as capabilities, that, that might be a good tool for you. Um, if you don't really have that type of capability or that knowledge, um, there are several A-B testing tools that are specific for uh, PPC landing pages. So uh, there's Unbounce, there's Lead Pages, there's ClickFunnels, um, but there's, there's tons of options out there. And then also if you have marketing automation like HubSpot, or um, ActOn or Marketo. Uh, most of those include um, A-B testing tools as well with landing page templates. So um, there's a variety of tools out there, but um, it really it depends on, on what you can do and, and what you're looking for. Okay, uh, and let's, uh, let's end it on this question. Uh, if, uh, if I were to start A-B testing with my landing page, uh, what type of test should I start with? I think this again kind of relates back to your capabilities. If, you're, if you have the time or the expertise to uh, do two completely different redesigns of a page, um, you can start out there. But um, as you saw throughout the webinar, some of the real slight changes of, of just headlines and things like that can really see significant lifts in your conversion rate. So um, if you put in the time to think of good headlines, uh, that might be a, a, a great place to start because it's very easy and quick to implement. It uh, doesn't take up much time and, like I said, it can have some really significant lifts. Okay. Well, uh, thanks, Keegan. I, I, we all appreciate you know, taking some time and, and kind of leading us through the landing page optimization world. Uh, that's all the time we do have for questions, though. So I would like to thank everyone for joining uh, Vertical Measures and our team. Uh, please mark your calendars for April 13th. We will be having Michael Barber come on and present a webinar on email marketing. Uh, we will have registration opening for that soon, so be on the lookout. Uh, one last quick announcement. Uh, we did have a brand new SEO free guide get released today called The Future of SEO Trends in 2017 and Beyond. Uh, you can find it on our website under the SEO Resources tab. It's a great, valuable resource to anyone interested in SEO, and that means everybody. So, uh, again, I'm Zach, and from all of us here at Vertical Measures, thank you for your time, and I hope you have a great day.